Hello, and welcome back to Code in 5 Minutes with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Code in 5 Minutes, we're going to continue taking a look at the Pong game that we made with uh, capturing the webcam. So there we are moving our hands to move those paddles up and down in a Pong game. Very cool. We did that in five minutes in the last one, so you should check that out if you haven't seen that. All right, here's the code for that. We'll take a quick review. We brought in the Zim Cam right there. And uh, what else? Set that to darker. We get our template, by the way, out here in Zim where we are on the code page. Bump, code page, zimjs.com. We copy the template from there. But like I said, all that happened in the last code in five minutes. We have a cam ask, and what the cam ask does is it looks like this. When we refresh, there's the cam ask. If we hit yes, then it goes to the browser and says, do you want to allow that? And when you allow, in comes the cam. All right, and it's a two-step process where we ask if they want to use it, and then uh, if they say yes, so if yes, we're doing this stuff, but we're also saying uh, make a new cam motion, and when that's ready, the ready event is when they say in the browser, yes, accept the cam, then the whole thing becomes ready. It's like that because Apple thinks that we haven't interacted with the canvas yet, even though we accepted the cam in a browser, so we had to put something where we interact with the canvas first. <laughs> it's like, argh. So, uh, so be it. Anyway, we are then taking the data events, and in the last one we had a ready event on both the left and the right. It's the same cam in there, really. So the ready event is triggered twice. So or you know, so we can just grab one ready event, and that's fine. And then we can get the data from either cam. So what we're going to do is type right in here. We're going to code a ball bouncing off the walls. And that's traditional JavaScript. As a matter of fact, it was a very common thing for people to do on the canvas when the canvas first started out because there wasn't too much else you could do. Um, but we've certainly uh, changed that. We can basically make anything on the canvas now uh, in Zim, certainly in 2D. And we can bring in things like 3JS and, and stuff like that to do 3D. So... Um, Lots to do now in the canvas, but back when it first began and there were no frameworks available, uh, that was a very common thing to do is make Pong, and it's just basically moving a ball, and when it hits the edge, you reverse the, the speed of, of that direction type thing. So we're going to build that now. However, we don't want to keep on accepting the cam here, so we're going to comment out some of the cam stuff comment out the beginning. We'll, we'll leave the tracks and the paddles around and then comment out the rest of the cam stuff for now. And so here's where we're going to start typing in our code in five minutes. Why don't we get to that, huh? All right, so we're starting the timer. Is that timer showing up? Yeah, there she be. We'll go const ball is equal to a new circle. And we'll make that 15 radius and green center it on the stage like so. Why don't we make some speeds as well? Const s for speed is equal to 4. And uh, we'll do a let on the speed x. So this is the speed x direction. We'll set that to the speed there. And we can do the same thing for the speeds y direction for now. That will do us. And then in a ticker, ticker dot add arrow function. So this constantly calls that arrow function. We'll say ball dot x is plus equal to, how about, yeah, plus equal to um, the speed x. And we'll do the same thing with the balls y. That should uh, move the ball down to the right. And let's have a look. And we should also see no cam stuff. Uh-oh, and we do. Oh, this is cam pong. We're on cam pong. Two. So there goes the ball. Whoop. Okay, we refresh and there goes the ball down to the right, but now we want it to bounce off the wall. Bounce off the wall! So if ball.y is greater than the stage height um, minus the ball.radius, or I guess we could do the other one if ball.y is less than zero plus the ball radius, ball dot radius 
then we want to change the, the direction of the speed y times equals this time minus one. And basically that reverses the direction in the y. So we get this. Boing, isn't that cool? Boing. All right, now what if we hit a paddle? Let's make it hit a paddle. So if we go zero here instead of s, we can aim it towards the right-hand paddle, and we will say if ball.x is... Oh, let's do a hit test on it. So on the paddle itself right here, paddle L, we'll go paddle... Oh, we'll do it on the right-hand paddle. Paddle right dot edge is equal to a new rectangle. We'll make this very thin. Uh, stage, oh, this will be actually, I guess, the paddle right dot height, like that. We're going to make it very thin, and why don't we make it white so we can kind of see that there. We will dot pose it inside, um, so 0 comma 0. Let's see, it needs to go on the left-hand side of the right paddle, so that would be on the left, uh, comma top, and this part doesn't matter so much, and we'll pose it right inside the paddle, paddle R. There we go. So we're going to do a hit test against that edge, a very thin edge down here. So we're doing that in the ticker. We say if the ball dot hit test circle rect. Can you believe we have one of those? So is the circle of the ball hitting the rect of the paddle right dot edge? Can we put that on the paddle right? Just make sure. Paddle right dot edge. Yep, is a thin rectangle. And if it hits, what do we do? We do something similar to before, where we say the speed dot x times equals minus one. There we go. And let's pause that timer. Boop. Now let's see what we've got here. Nice. So do you see that little thin white line there? There's none on this side, but there's a thin white line there. Here we go. Here, boop, and she bounces off. We may run into a problem when it comes in on an angle. If the ball comes in and hits on an angle, it may end up going and bouncing around in there as it starts to bounce in the reverse way, but it's still um, hitting. And therefore, we really want to add just uh, like a touch in there to say, um, which one is it? Let's see, it's this one right here. We would want to add a touch of a thing in there to say, move it over a bit to the right. Um, why don't we just leave that out of the time? It takes a little bit of time to think of that. Um, but what else do we need to do? We need to find out if the ball missed the paddle, like if it, if it hit this wall back over here. So we're gonna resume the timer and get that into place. So resume, and then we say, if the ball dot x is greater than the stage width uh, minus the ball dot radius, uh, then we will say, um, let's change the track. Uh, this is the track right dot color equals red. Bing, and we're done. Okay, so uh, that should do it. Oh, we've got the other side to do, though. What, what do we have to do on the other side? Yeah, let's see if this works on the right-hand side. How would we make the ball miss? We would make the ball miss by putting this back to, well, some... Anyway, we can randomize this. Uh, rand minus s to s. Okay, and this will probably miss on the right-hand side. So here we go. We refresh here. Good, do you see that? How it turned that bar red when we miss. So that's, oh, they score a goal. So um, what we can do now is just, let's, let's repeat for the left-hand side. And we'll do that in the timer, and then we can pause the timer and bring back the, um, the camera and see if we can work, yay! Alrighty, so we hit resume, and then we are bringing this in right here. If the ball dot x is less than the stage, this will be the ball radius, then set the tracks left to that color. And we copy this one too. And if the ball dot hit test paddle 
left dot edge, which we still need to make. Then we can do that same thing, and we need to make the left dot edge. So we'll copy this and paste it up here and change that to a left. How are we doing? We got 10 seconds. We change this to a left, and we change that to a left. And we'll pause that timer. All right, so we put a paddle. Oh, this is on the right-hand side, okay. Um, so we put a little line, basically, just a thin white line on the left-hand paddle, but on the right-hand side of the paddle left. And we did that other stuff pretty quickly, didn't we? So here we said if the ball's x is less than the ball's radius, so that's zero plus the radius, then we turn the left-hand track color to red. All right, let's bring back the other stuff and see if we built a ball bouncing around off of these paddles in a mere five minutes. Okay, so we come back here and refresh. Use the cam, yes, allow. And there goes a ball, uh, boing. And I gotta get my hands used to this again, boing. Boing, look at that. Should we miss? Uh, not yet, it's too fun to boing. All right, there we go, we're gonna miss this one. Oh, scored, okay. Let's um, see if the other side missed, yes. Okay, losing on the other side. Oh, we lost on that side. Oh, yes. Isn't that amazing? So um, that's pretty cool. Now, what's what's perhaps missing from this, though? I don't know if you noticed. For instance, uh, I can demonstrate it more easily, maybe. Uh, first of all, we, we probably should not always go start off going to the right, should we? So uh, odds. So odds will... Take a random number. If, if I want 80%, then 80% of the times that will be true. If I want 50%, that's the same as not putting anything there. So half the time, we're going to go to the right. And, oh, sorry, that's not a colon. It's a question mark. And then the other half of the time, we'll go to the other way. See what we're doing there? Half the time, we choose this, else we're choosing that. Okay, so we don't know if it's going to go left or right. We're pulling a random number there. That's fine. We got a speed. Um, what I was going to say, though, is it if we have if we just set the y to zero right now, I can kind of show you what the problem with our current setup is. And I hope you don't mind me going on a little bit about this, even though we've finished our code in five minutes. But that was great, right? We did a we did a ball bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the paddles, missing the paddles all in a five minutes. Uh, there's obviously some other things we want to do, but uh, there you go. So I'm going to show you what the problem is. Oh, crap. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I was going, see, that's a problem. And I moved my hand and it moved the paddle. That's not what I wanted to show you. So uh, I have to, okay, just stand here and not move. Okay, there it goes randomly going the other way. So here's the problem without me saying, see, there's the problem. It just sits here and bounces back and forth. So if we don't have anything changing the Y position, then it ends up, or the Y speed, sorry. If we don't have anything changing the Y speed, then it's a pretty boring game because it will always be at the same angle. Whatever the starting angle is, it just would never change until somebody misses. <laughs> so what we usually do in a game of Pong is if we're moving the paddle in a certain direction, then we add sort of this spin to the ball or we sort of make the ball um, change its Y speed a little bit, okay? And that changes the whole uh, game of Pong so that we don't have that uh, rather boring arrangement like that. So why don't we do, do that now? Uh, just so that we can cut and dry the next code in five minutes, maybe we can just add a score. We can make it so that we lose score and we reset the game and all that stuff. And we won't have to worry about adding the spin. <laughs> it's a little bit of a cheat because the spin's a touch complicated to think about. Um, but it's not too bad. So here's what we're going to do. You ready? We're going to take the paddle L dot last Y. We need to know what the last Y is and we'll set it to paddle uh, L 
dot x. Oh, <laughs> dot, dot y. Hello, oh, dot y. All right, we're going to do that both for the left hand paddle and the right hand paddle here. R and R. Down below in our ticker, all the time, no matter if we're hit, no matter what we're doing here, but just all the time, at some point down here, we're going to say paddle l dot last y is equal to paddle l dot y. And we do the same thing for the the right hand paddle. So you see what we're doing in the ticker itself, every time the ticker runs, we're going to record a new last y. But when we hit the paddle right here, this is when we hit the paddle and we change the x speed to a negative. Inside of here, we're going to also change the speed of the y. We're going to add uh, the paddle. This, which paddle is this? This is the right paddle right dot um, y minus paddle right dot last y like that okay now that could be a big number and we've got to watch it with our speed because the speed is how much the ball moves every ticker which is 30 60 frames a second sort of thing so uh, we don't want that to be too big so what we want to do and here's what i meant by fiddling with this a little bit. We're probably going to want to set a let damp of some sort that will dampen that. It won't it won't be a full amount. It's not really a damp, it's factor is probably better. Factor. Well, how about mm, ah, we'll use damp, whatever. Damp is equal to point two, point three, something like that. And what we're doing with the damp is instead of that Full amount right there we'll put brackets around it and we will multiply it by the damp so that reduces the effect of the the friction effect i suppose on that okay and you can adjust the damp even with this in place and we can do the same thing here the speed y for the left hand paddle and then let's take a look at it even with that damping we may find that it's it's moving too much. If we get too much on it, what we're going to see is a ball that just goes boing, 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 boing. You know, it keeps on. It's like a big zigzag that takes forever to uh, get to the next paddle. So let's have a look. I don't know if you've ever played Pong and that's happened to you. Put so much spin on it, the ball just goes boing, 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 boing. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, now there's the straight. I didn't move that paddle. Let's see if I can get some motion on a paddle here. Uh, not that time. It's hard to get the motion on the paddle. Uh, there, look, I got some motion on the paddle. Okay, so it may be that... Oh, I lost. I lost! I'm a loser! So we did get some motion on a paddle. That's great. It might be that we uh, <laughs> kind of pushed it along there. Oh, I took my hand away. Like so, as I moved my hand, it, it left the uh, it left the little bar. Um, so I'm seeing a couple problems. First of all, it might there. I got some motion. That's good. Uh, we want to uh, put a minimum amount on that though, because otherwise. Oh, my hand. It left again. It left with my armpit. My armpit's controlling it. Maybe I should try that. It's actually easier, perhaps, to just control it with my armpits. <laughs> I can switch my hands. I don't know if you can see very well, but <laughs> switch my hands. I feel like a little flightless bird. Maybe, oh, if I move back, that's a bit easier. Then my hands can be seen. Okay, let's try that. Anyway, that's kind of working. There's a couple things that we could um, fix up there. And if you guys want to leave, because it was a code in five minutes, and you, I was only going to watch this for five minutes, you're welcome to take off. This is kind of some extra stuff that we're doing here. But we might want to limit the speed y. I know we would want to limit the speed y. And so we can say uh, const. Actually, the damp is probably a const too. Const. Um, something like max y equals 8. Okay, so don't let it go more than 8. 
we can kind of get the idea of what eight is. That this is what eight would be like. Okay, so if we didn't do that, here's eight. Okay, so what you just saw there, that angle is it's pretty decent. That might even, if we did it from here, that might bounce twice before it gets there. That's probably pretty decent. Let's see what a max angle of 10 on that would be, just out of interest. Yeah, that's that's pretty angled. That almost that did two bounces in half the screen. I think eight's fine. Uh, right, and this will be eight. And then to limit it, it's not that tricky to do. We could limit it outside here, but we may as well just limit it inside. We say speed y is equal to we constrain. Excuse me, speed y to zero to max, what was it? Max y, like that. True means both the positive and negative side of that. Actually, I guess we don't need to do that, but we can just say uh, minus max y. Yeah, that would work. It would be if we, if we wanted it something like five to eight, uh, five to eight in the positive, but we also wanted negative five to negative eight, then constraint has a true here that means do the negative range as well. So this would be five to eight or negative five to eight. But anyway, we're, we're fine with max y, but minus here to a positive max y. If, if it just goes through zero, then there's no point in putting a alternate range here. Okay, so what we're doing is setting the speed to whatever the speed is, but in between these two numbers. Really, that's the same as using something like, whatever it is, math.max of the, the min speed, comma, math.min of the max speed and speed. <laughs> you know, all of these nested brackets, which is what's in behind here, but that's annoying to do all that stuff. All right, so that constrains the speed in this one, and we would do the same whenever we change the speed up here. So only when we're hitting the paddle and changing the speed do we need to fix that constraint. We don't need to do it all the time. That fixes the constraint. Another thing I noticed is when we pushed the paddle, when we pushed the ball along, when it was on an angle, when it kind of got caught on the paddle, uh, there's a reason for that. It's right here when we hit the paddle. So which one's hitting the paddle? These two. No, that's missing the paddle. Is this the paddle again? Yeah, this is the paddle. Okay, so what we need to do is make sure that we say um, ball dot x is equal to. So what's happened is our ball is heading towards the right hand paddle now. If it hits the line on the edge of the ball, then what might happen is as it bounces back, it will still be hitting the line. And therefore, as it hits that line, it keeps on toggling the speed X. And it can appear like the ball gets caught on the paddle. It goes, at worst, it just keeps on going right down. It goes, and finally, it, it goes one way or the other. <laughs> All right, so basically what we're needing to do is when, as soon as we hit it, we have to move the ball back outside and then change its um, direction or change its direction, move it back outside. But anyway, it's all, it's all gonna happen right away here. Um, but anyway, we wanna move it back outside. So we want to move the ball to the position of the paddle, which is in the middle. This is not the paddle, by the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? Back, back here, we got the paddle here. So we wanna move the ball back away from here. So here's the position of the paddle minus half the width of the paddle, minus half the width of the ball, maybe even minus one. Okay, and that, when it hits, it moves the ball outside here. Otherwise, if it hits here, it's gonna get snagged because it's gonna keep on hitting because it's too, you know, it's like hit the edge or it's, it's inside the paddle in a sense. Okay, so that would be ball.x um, is equal to the paddle right, dot x minus 
paddle right dot width divided by two, but we actually want to also minus the ball dot width, all that divided by two. So half the paddle width and half the ball width, that distance divided by two, we want to subtract it from the location, the middle there of the paddle right. So that's the new ball uh, X position. And now it won't get snagged on it, and same with in here. Except this time we're on the right or we're on the left hand paddle. So the left hand paddle and the left hand paddle. And we want to increase. We want to go to the right of that. So we want to plus that distance. So we want to plus half the width and half the, the ball width. Okay, now it won't get snagged. Let's just run that and see if it works. And like I said, I'd rather not do that in a code in five minutes next time when we're doing the score, because as, as you saw that, it just takes a little, well, at least that still worked. Uh, how can we tell? We've got to get kind of, um, <laughs> we've got to get, it just jog just as I uh, was trying to get the top there. We've got to kind of trying to get the ball snagged on the top, which isn't the easiest thing to do, as you can imagine here. It just happens every once in a while. And as a matter of fact, if we've, if we've got it, no, oh, I put my hand right out of the screen and then it caught the motion of my arm. Um, anyway, I believe that that's going to work. We won't even see if it ever breaks because <laughs> presumably we fixed the problem. So when it hits that edge, uh, it won't, but I'd have to play with this a little bit and I don't want to keep you here to play it. But the, that, what that basically does is when the ball hits here, it moves the ball out a bit and then sends it back the other way. Uh, rather than having it constantly hitting and go did 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 here. All right, this has been amazing. I'm glad that you're here with me. If you're still here, if you are, then you might be interested in checking out Zim at uh, zimjazz.com slash discord, zimjazz.com slash slack. Come in and join us. Uh, we'd love to have you here. This has been a code in five minutes with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Cheers.